Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from a person from Germany. Hey Brian, I'd like you to check out the song Rupsi, translates to Scars, by the Ukrainian band Dita Ingenerif, translates to Children of Engineers. P.S. I swear this is not black metal. Okay. <laughs> I, I like the clarification, but I've also become quite uh, quite wary of that. Like, if someone says it's not black metal, are, are they tricking me? <laughs> I, I have uh, PTSD regarding black metal, I suppose. I, I can't trust anybody giving me information about it. Um, but let's dive into this and see what's going on with this group. Oh, so far, so good. Oh, okay. Real fun placement of vocals, uh, background vocals specifically. Interesting. 3-2-3 is a weird way to break up an 8-bar phrase. The drum and bass only here creating all this tension as the uh, guitars are ripped out of the song. a weird way to break up an 8-bar phrase. It's what makes the chorus feel so disjointed. Just hanging on to this chord. Nice little bass lick. Okay. I'm going to have to check them out. That was pretty cool. Nice sort of hard rock, lighter side of punk kind of thing. I guess kind of close to pop punk, no? Yeah, I quite enjoyed that. That was a very nice surprise. We don't really get a lot of stuff like that on the channel, and it's 100% the kind of stuff I grew up on. I'd love to have more. I mean, I guess it doesn't really do well for uh, analysis, given that it... I mean, we have pop and we have punk, and they're both on the simpler side of the scale, 
And so when you smash them together, you have a fairly straightforward track. Um, but what they do with that straightforwardness is find ways to create variety outside of uh, technical composition. And so it keeps the song fresh pretty much on every level of the song. By the time we get to the second verse, we've uh, allowed this one guitar note to hang out and it exists as this fading voice throughout the song, which is a very cool, uh, just like narrative component to it. I don't know what it represents, but it's just like really cool. We come into the second verse and it feels like we're going to do the exact same thing we did, except the guitar just kind of stops playing and naturally fades out over the like half of the verse leaving us with just this empty vacuum where the guitar was and the drum and bass just forced to keep going by themselves holding the song down but obviously missing a key element of this section. Uh, the bridge explores one specific idea, puts some layers on top of it, brings in some noise through the guitar and this stuff brings us into the final chorus which has a brand new set of vocals on top of it. In fact it's two different vocal ideas creating counterpoint and no, those noisy guitar ideas are presented on top of the chords that the guitar typically plays during this section giving us a very different take on this final chorus. Aside from the second chorus Everything in here is a presentation of new ideas, and I think that's pretty cool. You know, it takes the ABABCB pattern, something we've heard millions of times, and ensures that every time we get back to something we've heard, there's something new there to alter it, just to change it up a little bit. We're not talking about drastic changes. We're not talking about having a motif exist through everything, but it's enough to keep my interest going, even on the third time I've heard the chorus. And not only that, but made me really enjoy that final chorus. It wasn't just an, oh, that's a neat twist. It's, oh, dang, this is nice. <laughs> um, and so I, I always get a kick out of that. I think it's fantastic to hear a group uh, utilize variation in such a way. Um, time signature, no, not, well, I mean, can't, well, phrasing, we'll go there as my brain attempts to process where I want to go. The whole song is in 4-4, four, four, and it's all done in four bar blocks, four bars of four beats each, which is 16 beats. Um, I don't know exactly how many bars our verse is. I would wager it's, I mean, I know it's a multiple of four because it didn't feel weird, but I don't know exactly how many. I don't know if it was eight bars. I don't know if it was 16, but we were definitely working with a multiple of four. We were also working with a multiple of four in the chorus, but the four is phrased oddly. And I presented it to y'all just in case uh, you didn't catch it because it might not be something everybody picks up easily on. But... Our first idea is a three bar phrase and it ends with some heavy punctuation from the guitar, the bass and the drums before restarting the, the idea all over again. Except this time we only do it for two bars. I'm not quite sure how they go about doing this. I don't know if they just cut off. Well, they do because we don't have that bump bump. I don't remember what goes on beats one and two of that third bar, but I'd wager if I remember correctly, it's just chords, a repetition of the same chords that ended bar two. So yeah, so that third bar is like a, an extension of bar two. Bar four and five is bars one and two all over again. And then we repeat the phrase again with bar six being bar one, bar seven being bar two, and bar three is a new idea that allows the progression to finally reach some sort of resolution that feels a bit natural, although it is still cut short, being an odd number of bars. Most of the time, 4-4 four, four feels natural because we work within four bar phrases, because we work with phrases that are symmetrical. So in 4-4, four, four, 
if you're not going to do a full four bar phrase, which typically is one chord per bar, you'll work with two bar phrases so that it's still an even number. This idea though of chopping it up into three and then two and then three and then three again, having this back to back three, it makes it very obtuse. What we expect to happen doesn't. And after we hear the three and the two and the three, our brain naturally ex uh, expects us to return back to another two and then we don't because the whole idea, the eight bars, starts over again back on a number, another three. On top of that, at the beginning of each of these groups, we have the same idea. So it locks it into place that when we hear this phrase, it's the beginning of a new idea. This little, uh, like, oh, it's when, the, when that specific chord comes back in. Um, that's the beginning of a new phrase. And that seems to pop up at various times. Granted, there's a pattern to it. Three bars, two bars, three bars, three bars, two bars, three bars. But it, it isn't. In our minds, on a, on a small scale, it isn't consistent. And so it makes for a very strange chorus that feels constantly off kilter. It feels unwieldy. It feels like it's actively trying to stand out. And I find that to be interesting. It is not something I would expect within this sound. It is not something that this genre typically works within I mean this is straight up a metric idea right here uh, and it's a wild one at that and uh, I'm, I'm just kind of blown away by the whole idea of it I'm curious what it all means I can't wait to hit the lyrics and see if there's anything in there about this like I said kind of standing out going against the grain being uh, uh, unpredictable, that kind of thing in the lyrics. Because it is such a wild idea. And it's very possible the music comes first, the lyric comes second. They have nothing to do with each other. But it's, it's just the idea. The whole chorus stands out so strongly to me. Because what's played within it is chords, a walking bass line, and fairly standard drum beats. Like I mentioned, there isn't really a lot of complicated ideas going on in the actual composition, what the instruments are playing. Rhythmically, it's odd because the phrasing's odd, but the ideas themselves fit with pop punk so well. <laughs> They're really not trying to do anything progressive in this song. It's very iterative, except for this one idea. And it sort of blows me away because I think that makes it stand out even more. It, it's so far beyond my expectations. I had no clue. I wasn't even thinking about anything like this happening once we were into the verse. And I was like, oh, I, I know what's going on here. I've heard this sound before. And then I didn't. I got swept right off my feet. They lulled me into a false sense of security with the intro in the first verse. And, uh, and then to put counterpoint on top of that, just wild. Oh, not to mention also is that the last group of three bars is instrumental. Like there's vocals on the first three, there's vocals on the two. It's only one and a half, but there's two. And then there's no vocals in the last three bars. Again, it's wildly asymmetric. It's not divided cleanly in half. There's no symmetry to it. It's just kind of bonkers. Um, you know, everything else that's happening is sort of what I just spoke about. It's expected. We have chords from the guitar. Uh, we eventually have noise from the guitar, uh, and the bridge helps build that section up. Uh, the drums are, I mean, they sit in the pocket. We have some really nice, uh, rhythmic metronomic drumming from them. Uh, a couple of ideas such as the two quarter notes in the middle of the chorus that uh, punctuates the end of the first three bars. But for the most part, the drums are, they're rhythmic, they're a metronome. They hold the band together. Uh, and the bass has some interesting walking ideas, usually sitting on pedal tones throughout uh, the verse and the chorus, but in the bridge has a nice little lick in there that I enjoyed. The tone of everything, the production of everything is absolutely solid. 
I suppose I should talk about the bridge real quick, simply because it's the one part that stands out to me in a way that I don't get. The bass kicks off the bridge. I like this lick. I think it's a pretty cool way to build things up. The guitar is playing chords here. The drums are just keeping the tempo. And then that's it. <laughs> The chord never changes, the bass lick never changes, the drums don't change, they just sit on this tension. And like I said, we do get these uh, ornamental guitar ideas, uh, little harmonic squeals and stuff like that, some feedback on a random note, uh, just stuff to create a noisy set of uh, ornamental things for the atmosphere. And then the nice thing is these do get carried over into the outro. They're an additional atmospheric component on top of what's typically played during the chorus. But the bridge to me sort of feels like it just is. And maybe that's what it's supposed to do. It runs very counterintuitive to what the chorus does, which is look at me, look at me, I'm different. You weren't expecting me. And the bridge is super understated, almost in a way of don't pay attention to me at all. I'm just doing the bare minimum to be here. And maybe that juxtaposition is the purpose. Running something a bit more complex against something that is completely bare bones. I don't know. But I did find myself during the bridge thinking, is this it? Yeah, I guess this is it. Can we just get to the end then? Maybe that's because I'm in this critical mindset. You know, I'm, I'm looking for things, for patterns, for information. And when I hit on every instrument and I'm like, okay, I know what everyone's doing. I'm just left there to wait for the next piece of information to analyze and to understand what's going on with. Maybe that section doesn't feel as long as it did if I was listening casually. But I did find myself waiting for whatever was coming next to come on it's, what are we doing here so i don't know i guess everyone else let me know what your thoughts were on that if it uh felt like it needed something else or if it was fine as it was particularly if you're more of a casual listener i'm really interested in, in hearing if maybe that's just a, a me thing let me read some lyrics on this which the requester was nice enough to translate for me and we'll wrap the video up so I greatly appreciate the effort that went into this. I was given the Ukrainian lyrics as well as the English lyrics and in some cases where the translation um, was a bit literal, it was also translated both to the literal one and to something that would be more fitting of the English language, maybe a, um, shifting it to a different idiom that we use in English. Also in one case, I was given some additional information about what a specific phrase was. It was a place in uh, Kiev, and it was very cool to get that extra information, kind of get a little bit of insight into what that actually means. So like I said, there was a lot of effort that went into this, and I greatly appreciate it. Now, the song appears to be about learning from one's past. And in this case, people who don't learn from their past. It's called Scars, and all of this ties together in the chorus that says, again, he forgot how he earned the scar tattoos. So it's supposed to be this idea that your mistakes of your past are burned into your skin. They form scars, and they're supposed to help you remember those mistakes in order not to make them again. That's the gist I get from this. The song ends with let these scars help to hold on a little longer. So I think I get the general gist of this track. But I don't get all of it. I think it's interesting right off the bat, though, we have this idea of learning from our mistakes, right? And a common place for learning is academia, school. So we kick off the, the track, says physics, math, stipends, poems, and plans. Why, though, are scars is teaching, scars teaching so rarely? Kind of bringing this parallel between 
uh, learning school knowledge and learning life knowledge. I thought that was a cool way to kick this off. The second part of the first verse, though, I don't get. It says, in appearance, a three, a five in the soul. On which scale? At least on a scale to five and a little wrinkle on the face. I, I don't understand any of that at all. I don't know if there's something that I, I missed. Maybe there's some additional context. Uh, like I said, this translator put a lot of extra info in here. So maybe if there was something lost in translation, it probably would have been presented. I'm not 100% sure what's going on with that part. The chorus, though, as I mentioned, says the merits and the, off and the efforts let them go to hell. Again, he forgot how he earned the scar tattoos. Uh, in this case, uh, the literal translation is let them go under the three devils. Um, and of course, you know, in English we say go to hell. Um, but I think that's a pretty cool idea right there. Both the, the phrase itself and the fact that it's put there. I wish genius annotators would do that. Although I'm trying to think of the last time I saw any translation on Genius. I always have to take it to Google or DeepL, so... Eh, maybe that's not the annotator's fault. Um, the second chorus, I mean the second verse, says, He will cross Science Prospect, which is a street in Ukraine's capital. Cross this street into a new and somewhat entangled exit ramp. He'll drive by my taxi. That's the first half. The second half says, if I don't keep up with this day, fiasco after fiasco will go off. Why are the scars not teaching me? I like how it kind of takes, uh, it takes things on a more personal level. The chorus says, he forgot the lessons taught to him by his scars. And this, and this verse says, I also forget mine. Or in another perspective, I try to remember mine, but I'm not seeing the teachings. But I don't know who this person is who's going to drive around Kiev and drive by this person's taxi. I don't, what, I don't know what that has to do with anything else. The second half, though, makes sense to me. It's them trying to learn from their mistakes, too. Uh, so, yeah, I don't... Like I said, I think I get the grand scheme of this song lyrically, but there's a lot in it. Uh, a lot of the details that go over my head a little bit. However, I don't really think that matters too much on the casual side of things because I just really enjoyed this track and I'm definitely going to be listening to more of this group. Um, and they're called Dita and Zenerif. And Zenerif, I think. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not, but this is their track. Those are my thoughts on it. What are yours? Uh, down in the comments, let me know your thoughts, opinions, perspectives. If you enjoyed it, if there's anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on, let me know down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell greatly appreciate all three of those that wraps it up for today i'll be back tomorrow though 5 p.m eastern standard time we're going to continue on with this week's theme and check out another special selection until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos mm -hmm.